This is Major General Albert N. Stubblebine III, U.S. Army, retired. Through a lethal combination of greed, stupidity, poor planning, and I believe through a large dose of malicious intentionality, you and your family are threatened in a way none of us has ever encountered before. Knowing what I know, I cannot, cannot stand idly by without sharing both the danger, its cause, and a solution. I spent most of my 32 years of active duty in military intelligence, and I was preparing and acting on estimates of the situation designed to identify, appraise, and deflect threats before they occurred or dealing with those threats once they did occur. This is my estimate of the current situation regarding the Northern Hemisphere. Fact. Nuclear power was sold to us as a power source that would be so plentiful that it would be too cheap to meter. We were told that although no one knew what to do with the plutonium, and the other disastrously dangerous waste produced by nuclear power uh, plants, we would figure it out before we had a problem of any magnitude. And we were told that nuclear power plants were so amazingly well designed that they could not endanger us through mechanical or operational failure. All three of these fundamental premises have turned out to be manifestly untrue. Fact. On March 11, 2011, Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station with six nuclear reactors suffered cataclysmic damage from an earthquake which some believe was a man-made event and the resulting tsunami. Hydrogen explosions, at least one nuclear explosion, and then subsequent deterioration of the physical plants at five of those reactors have created a threat situation unparalleled in human history. Fact, despite denial and cover-up, the reality has emerged that enormous amounts of radioactive material has been spewing into the atmosphere polluting the groundwater and the food of Japan and entering by the tens of millions of gallons the waters of the Pacific. Fact, radioactive Fukushima debris is being trucked around the country to be incinerated in the open air all over Japan by the Japanese government, endangering not only the Japanese, but all of us, by increasing the fallout, which will further contaminate the water and the soil of the rest of the Northern Hemisphere. Fact. Measurements by the U.S. government and scientists at laboratories all over the northern part of the planet have been quite consistent in showing that increasing radiation is being found in milk, in spinach, in the drinking water, in the air, in the seaweed, and the fish, and just about everything else that has been measured. Fact, official, quote, safe limits of radiation were raised first by a hundred and then by a thousand fold, and the meaningless measurements of the, quote, no harm to human health, unquote, were repeated by agencies despite the fact that the U.S. government statistics showed clearly that in the first nine months of the Fukushima disaster, fully 14,000 deaths occurred in the U.S. alone, which can be fairly laid only at the doorstep of the radiation reaching us from the escalating disaster of Fukushima Daiichi. Today, Professors Mangano and Sherman have upped their estimate on the U.S. 
Fukushima-related deaths to more than 20,000 in the year following Fukushima. Not surprisingly, of course, the most vulnerable die first, the babies. By December 22nd of 2011, we were also seeing infant deaths in British Columbia up by hundreds of percentage points. Those were healthy babies. This is precisely what happened to the former Soviet Union in Europe and the U.S. following Chernobyl. But the effects are not limited to young children. Experts are also warning us of increases in lung cancer. Cesium-137, now being released in the staggering amounts in the air over Fukushima, causes heart disease in children and in others. Fact. Radioactive elements lose half of their radioactivity during a half-life. Every radioactive element has various isotopes which have different half-lives. At the end of a half-life, whether it's seconds, minutes, or days, the radiation in the material is 50% of what it was before. Uranium-238 has a half-life of 4.5 billion years, while iodine-131 has a half-life of 8 days. Although iodine-131's half-life is relatively short-lived, there are other longer-lived radiation iodine isotopes like iodine-125 with a half-life of 59 days. And oh, by the way, this poisons the thyroid, the breast, the prostate, the brain, and other susceptible tissues. It enters the body and damages the DNA for years. And once the DNA damage is done, the effects are long-lasting and extend into future generations. That is, if survival is possible. So the biological half-life of ionizing radiation is enormous, extending well into future generations. Fact. There is no such thing as a safe dose of ionizing radiation. All ionizing radiation is dangerous. The National Institute of Health found that there is, as stated above, no such thing as a safe dose of radiation. Fact. If we look at Chernobyl as a guide for the magnitude of the danger, although Fukushima is vastly more dangerous, and I will come to that shortly, we will find that according to an April 2006 report by the International Physicians for Prevention of Nuclear Warfare, that's the IPPNW, entitled Health Effects of Chernobyl 20 Years After the Nuclear Disaster, more than 10,000 people are today, remember this is 2006, affected by thyroid cancer, and 50,000 cases are expected. In Europe, the IPPNW claims that 10,000 deformities have been observed in newborns because of Chernobyl's radioactive discharge with 5 thousand deaths among newborn children. They also state that several hundreds of thousands of the people who worked at the site after the disaster are now sick because of radiation and tens of thousands of them are dead. Revisiting the issue for the 25th anniversary of the Chernobyl disaster, the Union of Concerned Scientists described the previous estimate of 4,000 dead as pertaining only to a much smaller subgroup of people who experienced the greatest exposure 
to release the radiation. Their estimates for the broader population are 50,000 excess cancer cases resulting in 25,000 excess cancer deaths. This estimate focuses only on cancer, does not deal with infant and childhood mortality, does not deal with infertility, does not deal with health problems other than cancer, although the non-cancer health effects of radiation exposure are massive. Fact. Chernobyl was entombed after years of continuous, and I might add, very dangerous effort, reducing the amount of continuously emitted radiation. Chernobyl was, by all estimates, at least until March 11, 2011, the worst nuclear disaster in history. Chernobyl was a single reactor. Fact, Fukushima is a collection of six nuclear reactors. Five of them have been destroyed by immediate or late effects of the events of March 11, 2011. Two of them, reactors numbers three and four, are MOX, or mixed oxides of plutonium reactors. In plain terms, they breed more plutonium than ordinary reactors. Fact, Tokyo Power Company, TEPCO, has stated that it will make no effort to entomb the reactors out of consideration for the dividends of the shareholders. Get that, the dividends of the shareholders. Since entombment is a monumentally expensive undertaking, assuming, of course, that it can be accomplished at all. The government of Japan also concurs that TEPCO has no such responsibility, nor apparently does the Japanese government. Conclusion. Who does? No one. No one at all. Which means that the decaying and exploding and deteriorating reactors are open to the elements, suffering from progressive destruction and becoming much, much more dangerous with every passing moment. Before I tell you what I propose for you and your family, because there are solutions, natural ones, I would like you to bear with me for a moment longer while I bring you what may be the worst news so far. There is no way to sugarcoat these facts. Denying them, blacking them out, pretending that they are not real is of no help to you or your family, and it leaves you totally unprepared for a danger which the Natural Solutions Foundation, of which I am proud to be the president, has been warning about since the first day of the unfolding Fukushima Daiichi disaster. As of three weeks ago, the levels of radiation inside the spent fuel pools of Unit 2 are too high to measure. Get that, are too high to measure. And the water there is evaporating, meaning that heat and radiation could easily build to very high levels. Unit 4, an MOX reactor, like all nuclear reactors, creates spent fuel rods. These rods are stored underwater to cool and quench the reaction, physically cooling the nuclear rods and keeping them from contact with the open air. According to a recent assessment by Mr. Robert Alvarez, the senior policy advisor to the Secretary and Deputy Assistant Secretary for National Security and the Environment at the U.S. Department of Energy, the situation at Unit 4 is more 
than dire. Allow me to read some excerpts from his report on the situation. Quote, it is my understanding that in reactor number four, there are 1,231 irradiated spent fuel rods in pool number four, which contain roughly 37 million curies of long-lived radioactivity. The number four pool is about 100 feet above ground, is structurally damaged, and is exposed to the open elements. If an earthquake or another event were to cause this pool to drain, this could result in a catastrophic radiological fire involving nearly 10 times the amount of cesium-137 released by the Chernobyl accident. The infrastructure to safely remove this material was destroyed as it was at the other three reactors. Spent reactor fuel cannot be simply lifted into the air by a crane as if it were routine cargo. In order to prevent severe radiation exposure, fires, and possible explosion, it must be transferred at all times in water and heavily shielded structures into dry casks. As this has never been done before, the removal of the spent fuel from the pools at the damaged Fukushima Daiichi reactors will require a major and time-consuming reconstruction effort and will be charting in unknown waters. Despite the enormous destruction caused at Daiichi site, dry casks holding a smaller amount of spent fuel appear to be unscathed. Based on U.S. Energy Department data, assuming a total of 11,138 spent fuel assemblies are being stored at the Daiichi site, nearly all of which are in pools. They contain roughly 336 million curies of long-lived radioactivity. About 134 curies is cesium-137. This is roughly 85 times the amount of cesium-137 released at the Chernobyl accident. This was estimated by the U.S. National Council on Radiation Protection, the NCRP. The total spent reactor fuel inventory at the Fukushima Daiichi site contains nearly half of the total amount of cesium-137 estimated by the NCRP to have been released by all atmospheric nuclear weapons testing, Chernobyl, and all worldwide reprocessing plants, approximately 270 million curies. 85 times more cesium-137 than Chernobyl. Very simply put, if this much cesium-137 is released, it will destroy the world environment and our civilization. This is not rocket science, nor does it connect to the pugilistic debate over nuclear power plants. This is an issue of human survival. It is also important for you and all of the public to understand that reactors that have been operating for decades, such as those at Fukushima Daiichi, have generated some of the largest concentrations of radioactivity on the planet. So in brief, Fukushima will continue to pour out its lethal brew into the oceans, poison the air, and may, if another earthquake or more structural damage occurs, release a radiation hazard of literally unlimited 
potential. Now to solutions. First, antioxidants. While not perfect, the intake of high potency nutrients like resveratrol, which have been shown to actually help repair radiation damaged DNA, is essential. So is the consumption of whey protein made from strictly radiation free organic cows, processed at low temperature, and protected from harsh chemical degeneration. There are other nuclear protective nutrients such as radiation free and I underscore radiation free sea vegetables and radiation free miso soup. Radiation protection is an absolute essential part of your general health protocol now. And if it is not, it should be. Please make a note of this website provided free of charge by the Natural Solutions Foundation for your information. Please share it widely and please take seriously the information that you find there. Second, food. Your food is contaminated and so is your water. The Natural Solutions Foundation committed to clean, unadulterated food as one of its central pillars has committed itself to providing a clean supply of food for you and your family through something quite unique for a health freedom organization. It's an international version of your local community supported agriculture or food co-op. We will bring clean food to you from the least radioactive parts of the planet. The deep south, which is Central and South America, and Africa. That food is totally free of agrochemicals and other toxins, absolutely non-GMO, and available to members of the food co-op. If you're interested in membership, I invite you to visit www.friendlyfoodcoop.org. In addition, we are seeking investors now to make this project come to rapid fruition. It is one of the projects of the Fund for Natural Solutions. www.fundfornaturalsolutions.org Our unique private equity fund to become an investor in what we believe will be an outstanding business opportunity, which also saves lives, please visit www.fundfornaturalsolutions.org and then contact me at Jen Burt, that's General Burt, G-E-N-B-E-R-T, at fundfornaturalsolutions.org. And then there is place of residence. Frankly, those of you who stay in the Northern Hemisphere will sicken, and your families will sicken and die as well. If you love your families, if you value your life, my estimate of the situation must conclude that for all serious persons, Considering migration to the Southern Hemisphere is a must. If you are interested in discussing with me personally and with our Foundation trustees how your family and you might make that move in a safe, orderly, and sensible way, I'll be happy to talk with you. Again, I invite you to contact me personally at Jen Burt at fundfornaturalsolutions.org That's G-E-N-B-E-R-T at fundfornaturalsolutions.org Thank you for your time and your careful attention. We are facing grave times. Some of us, through prudence 
and timely action will thrive better than others. The Natural Solutions Foundation is committed to solutions to these grave dangers. This is Major General Albert N. Stubblebein III urging you to not only listen but also to hear what I have said and then take the appropriate action now.